Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to utilize the middle term of geometric sequences. Okay, so basically, if A, B, C are consecutive terms in geometric sequences, so that, yeah, if that A, B, C is a geometric sequence, okay, then B, which is the middle term, divided by A is the same as C divided by B. Okay, basically, guys, have a look at this. If two, four, eight, if this is a geometric sequ um, sequence, because I see how it's multiplying by two each time. This is a geometric sequence, and have a look, guys. Two times two is four, okay? Two times two is four, and to get that two, we also do four, this middle number, divided by two, right? That's the common ratio two, isn't it? Okay, because we're multiplying with the same number each time to get the next number, okay? We simply go 4 divided by 2 to obtain the common ratio, and you can also find it by doing 8 divided by 4, okay? Because 4 times, again, 2 is 8, so to get that 2, we can simply do 8 divided by 4, which is also 2, okay? That's all it's saying in that part there, B divided by A equals to C over B. That's what it means here, okay? So think about this kind of concept if you're a bit confused. That's basically all there is asking you to do. So, now that we know what that means, now that you know why we're doing this kind of thing, okay, let's make it into a simpler form. So what I'm gonna do is cross multiply. When you see fraction equals to fraction, guys, always cross multiply to simplify and solve, okay? So I'm just gonna cross multiply. B times B, which is B squared, equals to A times C, A times C. And that's it, okay? So try to remember this, guys. B squared equals two A times C, and if you don't think you don't, if you don't want to remember that, you can just remember this kind of concept and try go from this step and then do this step. Okay, so remember B squared equals to A times C. That's how we utilize the middle number B. See how B occurs in both fractions. Okay, so that's something also you should remember. But if you don't want to remember that. Of course, just remember the concept of it, okay? Remember how we get to this kind of fraction, okay? Think about your common ratio. All right, so let's try use this in our questions. So sometimes we need to use this when we're in some kind of questions. So starting with question six, it says, find x if three x 75 form a, ge a geometric sequence, okay? So three x 75 is a geometric sequence and we want to find that middle number x. Okay, so remember what I told you guys? To find the common ratio, we can go x divided by three, that's the common ratio. That's also equal to 75 divided by x, isn't it? So it's always the next number divided by the previous number. Okay, so x divided by three is going to be the same as 75 divided by x, and that can be cross multiplied and form something like this. So x times x is simply x squared, and then three times 75, I just left it like this, three times 75. All right, and that's it. That's what we're gonna apply. All right, so you can start with this step if you want, if you don't wanna remember that step straight away. So start off something like this, and then go to something like that. Okay, now three times 75 is simply 225. To get x, we simply square root, and don't forget your plus or minus, okay? Uh, x is going to be plus or minus root 225, which is plus or minus 15, okay? And that's the answer. So x, x can be two different numbers. X can be negative 15 or positive 15, okay? And they both will make a geometric progression, okay? That's it, guys. That's question six. So basically, Remember those um, thing, common, finding the common ratio, you can always do the um, next number divided by the previous number, okay? So x divided by three is the same as 75 divided by x. Please remember that. Okay, so that's question six. Question seven says, if x, x plus two, x plus six in a geometric progression, okay? Find x, okay? So that's a geometric progression. We need to find the value of x. But see how there's x values in all three terms? 
still we're going to do the same thing guys. Um, if you'd like to start with the fractions, I'll do that for you. So the middle number divided by the previous number x, so x plus 2 divided by x will be the same as x plus 6 divided by that previous number, which is x plus 2. So it's going to be x plus 6 divided by x plus 2. Okay, and then cross multiply. So x, x plus 2 times x plus 2 is basically x plus 2 squared equals 2. This times this, so x times x plus 6. x times x plus 6. Basically guys, after you, if you like to include this step, you can do that. But I'll wait for you can remember this kind of step, okay? x plus 2 is the middle number, isn't it? So the middle number squared equals 2, the outer two numbers multiplied together. Think of it like that, okay? Because, I mean, you can include this, but it does need you to spend some more time, doesn't it? So, if you want to remember, if you want to have a way to remember it, it's always the middle number squared equals two, the outer two numbers multiplied together. All right. Anyway, let's simplify. So I'm going to expand this out. X plus two squared is x squared plus four x plus four, and then x times x is x squared. X times six is six x. Okay, just expanded everything out. Get rid of all the brackets. Now look, x squares and x squares will cancel itself, okay? So what do we have left? If I move the 6x onto the other side, we have 4x minus 6x, which is negative 2x. And then of course, move the 4 onto the other side, so over the constant over to the other side, we have negative 4. We need x, so divide both sides by negative 2. x is simply 2, okay? Because negative 4 divided by negative 2 is 2. And that's the answer, that's the value of x. See, it's all it's asking us to do is find x. So we found x, okay? Try to remember this step, guys, okay, without the you need to do the fraction thing that I did, okay? So middle number squared equals two, the outer two numbers multiply together. Okay, so I hope that's a way you can remember, remember it. Okay, that's question seven. Question eight says, given x, 18, 27, y are in geometric sequence find x and y so this time there's four numbers given in a geometric sequence and we have two different pronumerals x and y all right we're going to find what x and y are so to start off with i'm going to start with looking at the first three numbers first okay let's not worry about the y let's just worry about the first three numbers so remember, middle number squared, so 18 squared, is going to be the outer two numbers multiplied together. So 27 times x, okay, 27x. All right. All I applied was that middle number concept thing. And then to find x, simply divide 18 squared by 27, and then that should be simplified to 12. Okay, you can figure that out. That's going to be 12. Okay. So guys, we found that x equals to 12. Now that we've done that, I'm simply going to find y now. So I found x equals to 12. Let's find y by using these three numbers now. So that's what I did. Middle number squared equals to the outer two numbers multiplied together. Okay, so 18 times y over here. All right. Now, to find y, simply divide both sides by 18. 27 squared divided by 18 should be simplified to 40.8. So you can figure that out as well. So y is going to be 40.5. Okay, so guys, we found x, we found y. Therefore, x is just 12, y equals to 40.8, 40.5, sorry. Okay, just make a little concluding statement, um, write down all your answers. Okay, because don't, don't get your teachers to look for your answers. They'll be frustrated. So, yeah, that's it. So can you see here, we found x and y individually. But first looking at the first three numbers and then looking at the next three numbers like that. Okay, so that was actually quite easy. All we did was apply that um, rule two times in one question. Okay, so that's question eight. Have a look so we can move on. Okay, question nine says find A and B if A, one, A plus B, forms a geometric sequence and b, 0 0.5, a minus b, forms an arithmetic sequence. 
Okay, so this time it's a little bit of a more trickier question, I think, because look, it says a1, a plus b is a geometric sequence, whereas um, b, 0.5, a minus b forms an arithmetic sequence. Okay, well, don't hesitate, let's do our usual thing. I'm going to start off by looking at the geometric sequence a1, a plus b, okay? Middle number squared, okay? Remember if the geometric sequence is t1, t2, actually I write it in terms of n, okay? Since they're written in terms of n. I'll go tn, tn plus 1, tn plus 2, okay? If these are the three num first three numbers in a sequence, so the first number is tn, the next number would obviously be tn plus 1, and the next number will be tn plus 2, right? Remember, middle number squared, tn plus 1 squared, equals to the outer two numbers multiplied together. So tn times tn plus 2. Okay? So that's our usual rule that we applied using our middle number squared. Okay? Now guys, that's our geometric sequence. Consider arithmetic sequence. Let's again say that tn, tn plus 1, tn plus 2 are the sequence, are the numbers or the terms in an arithmetic sequence. Okay? They say it's 2 times t over n plus 1 equals to tn plus tn plus 1, but f probably wondering why we got that. Basically, have a look at this, guys. Look, in a, an arithmetic sequence, remember how we're adding the same number? to get the next number. So to Tn, we add some number, the common difference to Tn to, TN, to obtain Tn plus 1. And we still um, add the same common difference to Tn plus 1 to obtain Tn plus 2, right? So basically, guys, to find the common difference, we can do Tn plus 1, that number there, minus the previous number Tn. And that will be the common difference, right? Basically, the difference of these two will be the common difference, yeah? That's why I subtracted that and that. So that minus that. Now that will be, that common difference is the same as that number minus that number. Okay, because remember how we add the same number that we did to this one, to this one, to obtain the next number? So the difference between these two will also represent the common difference, right? So that's why I'm going to do Tn plus 2 minus Tn plus 1. Okay. Now look guys, I'm going to move this one onto the other side. Negative Tn plus 1. If we move it over, it's going to be Tn plus 1 plus Tn plus 1. And on this time, and I'm going to move this Tn onto the other side as well. So this becomes positive Tn plus Tn plus 2. Okay? Now guys, look at this. Tn plus 1 plus Tn plus 1 is 2 Tn plus 1 and that's equal to Tn plus Tn plus 2. That's how we got that. Okay, so does that make sense, guys? Again, with the arithmetic one, I hope you remember what the arithmetic sequence is. But we're adding by the same number each time to get the next number, right? So this time, I also thought about the common difference and then applied some rule. The difference of this is the same as the difference of these two, since we're adding the same common difference each time. That's how I obtained this kind of rule this time, for the arithmetic one. So trying to understand that, guys. Basically, I'm trying to do some working here to show you. So I hope that makes sense. Okay. Always consider your common difference when you get to these kind of questions. Okay, so have a look at those two these two and because now we're going to apply them. So firstly with the geometric one the middle number squared so 1 squared equals to the outer two numbers multiplied together so a times a plus b. Okay that's what I've got for the first equation and basically I use the geometric sequence rule. Alright now with the arithmetic one it's going to be 2 times the middle number n plus 1, okay, 2 times the middle number 0 0.5, so 2 times 0 0.5 equals 2, the outer two numbers added together, okay, added together this time. So Tn plus Tn plus 2 is going to be b plus a minus b, so b plus a minus b, okay, so basically I applied these rules with the given um, sequences. 
Okay, look. Hey, but look, guys, look. B plus A minus B. B minus B is just zero. Okay, so therefore we have A left. A is simply going to be one because two times 0 0.5 is one. So we simply found A pretty quickly. A is one. Okay. So now, substitute a equals to 1 into equation 1, because we also need to find b, don't we? So that's our equation 1. I'm going to substitute that value we've got for a here into here, like this. So it's going to be 1, since a is 1, 1 times 1 plus b, and that's equal to 1 squared, which is simply 1. Okay, so therefore b is 0. Well, 1 times 1 plus b is simply 1 plus b. And then if I move 1 onto the other side, 1 minus 1 is simply going to be 0. So b is 0. And that's the answer. Okay, does that make sense, guys? So therefore, make a little concluding statement. A is 1, b is 0. Okay, make a little summing up statement telling us what a and b are.